Hey, what's going on Rockstar Engineers and welcome to Packet Tracer 101. In this series, we are going to be introducing you to Cisco's Packet Tracer application. If you are unfamiliar with what Packet Tracer is, it is simply a simulation tool provided to us for free from Cisco. So head over to the link in the description below to the Cisco website so you guys can download your copy of Packet Tracer for free and you can follow along with us here. Now again, Packet Tracer allows us to simulate networks virtually. So from our computer, we can essentially virtualize an entire network and what that would look like. So great for building diagrams, great for troubleshooting. But in this series of videos, we are gonna introduce you to the very fundamental basics of Packet Tracer. And at the end of this series, we are actually going to show you how we can build a small network with Packet Tracer. So let's get started and jump right in. The agenda for the first part of this course is that we'll briefly take a look at the difference between PKT and PKA Packet Tracer files. The next lesson, we'll look at setting up your workspace and customizing that view so it looks the way that you like it and it's comfortable. Then we're gonna go over the editing tools that will help you set up your network diagram so that it has a very professional look. Next, we'll look at network devices. So we'll look at routers, switches, access points. We'll see how the different tabs in each of these devices can be used to do different things and configure the devices the way we want after network devices, we'll look at end devices and PCs, laptops, and servers, and we'll review how to configure some of the most popular services on those servers so you can have them running in your network. Of course, we'll look at the different connections, what they are and when they're used. Then we'll take a look at the difference between the logical and physical views and how we can customize those. At the end, we'll demonstrate building a small network and show how easy it is to create a network of your own. Some tips and reminders with Packet Tracer. First of all, you should be using the most current version. So as of the recording of this video, it was 7.3.1. You'll know when you don't have the most current version when you get an error when you're opening a Packet Tracer file and it says that you're version is not compatible. So that means you need to go and download the latest version. But before you do that, please make sure that you uninstall your current version of Packet Tracer before you reinstall the new version. And it's simply because if you don't, you actually have side-by-side -side installations of Packet Tracer and things could get confusing there. Another thing to keep in mind is that Packet Tracer is a software simulating software. So it will do almost everything that real equipment will do, but it does have some limitations there. Some technology some commands, some protocols that it does not support. But those are few and far between. We shouldn't run across any of those issues here in this video series. But just remember that when you're creating your own networks, that there are some limitations. But for the most part, Packet Tracer runs really well. So Packet Tracer is obviously good for doing labs, practicing labs. That was, you know, the primary use of it up until now. But we're going to see what Packet Tracer is also good for, like designing networks and building networks and testing things out. What we often use Packet Tracer for is just quick testing and verifications. Uh, perhaps if you're learning something, for instance, you know, if we go into a syslog and we see a uh, syslog message level of five as a notification, when an OSPF neighbor adjacency is either lost or formed, we can go into Packet Tracer, drag a couple of routers up, configured OSPF between them, and look at the syslog message that was formed. So it's really great for doing those quick tests and things that you want to check, meaning you don't actually have to go out into your network devices and run any commands. You don't have to configure OSPF on anything to test anything. Thing, Packet Tracer actually allows you to simulate some testing environments so that you don't have to mess with anything in production, which is very, very important. Just the ability to simulate a troubleshooting scenario in real time without affecting anything in production is huge. So definitely take advantage of that. The same can be said with just a simple syntax. If you just wanna see what the syntax for something is, just open up Packet Tracer and it'll show you. You'll often find that it's much quicker than trying to look things up online. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about in this video is the difference between PKT and PKA files. A PKT file it looks like a little envelope with a little green T in the bottom corner of it. And a PKT packet tracer file, they are typically used with a separate lab guide. In order to do those labs, you have to open up packet tracer, and then there's usually going to be an accompanying PDF file that goes along with it. PKA files have a gray envelope, but it's got a red A instead of that green T in the bottom identifying the PKA. So the difference is that it has an integrated lab guide. When you open up a PKA file, it opens up two windows, the normal packet tracer window, and it opens up a second window that are the instructions or the lab guide itself. 
PKA files are also self-grading, self-checking, so they will follow the progress as you're configuring the required items and keep track of them in the end. So it allows you to do self-checking. So if you get done with a lab and something's not working and you want to know why, and it's late at night and there's no one to ask, that PKA file will allow you to go in and look at the required assessment items to see if any of those were either misconfigured or maybe just missed, not configured at all. So it allows you to look and see what you did wrong on your own right now when you wanna do it. So if you look at a PKT file, it's gonna come accompanied with a lab guide. That'll be similar to this. And the lab guides for the PKT files will have the configuration instructions in the left margin, and that's done on purpose. So when you open up a packet tracer file, you can open it up and shrink it down to fit so that you could still see the instructions while you're working in the lab. So that's very convenient. For a PKA file, the lab itself looks the same. You have your packet tracer window, but in addition, you have the second window that has the instructions for what you need to configure in it. All of these will have a little button or a little box in the bottom left corner that's always on top. So what this is used for is if right now I were to click on a network device, then the instructions window would disappear underneath the packet tracer window. Normal Windows behavior. Another thing, if you look at the bottom right corner, and it's very, very small, even for me, I'm sure it's even smaller for you, we can see the completion and it says 50%. So it starts at zero, and as you configure required items, that number obviously increases as you go through the lab. And it's not everything that you configure, just the ones that it counts. So it'll begin tallying those based on your progress within that lab. So you can see here at the 50% of the required items have been configured. If I was stumped and not sure what I've done at this point, I can look through the configs, I don't see it, I can click on the check results button here at the bottom and then go up to the middle tab assessment items and it clearly shows a green check for the things I did right and a little red X for the things that are wrong. And I can see here if I look under router one on ports gig zero zero and gig zero one, apparently I have configured the incorrect NAT mode or the net mode is just not configured. I happen to know it's not configured. I did the lab, but it points to exactly what it is that's wrong. And this again is very convenient when it's late at night and there's no one to answer your questions immediately. Very easy to jump in these and troubleshoot on your own. I hope this first video lesson was helpful for you. In our next lesson, we will be setting up your workspace. So stay tuned for that video. If you guys wanna check out the rest of the videos, the links are in the description below. You can see them now before they go live on YouTube. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more. And if you're looking to level up your IT career, be sure to follow us over at NextGenT, where we could take you from zero to engineer.